Welcome back to Train Signal Citrix Zen App Training. You're watching Zen App Command Line Tools lesson. So we're getting close. This is going to be a, a very quick lesson. I want to take this opportunity at this point to introduce you to some of the Zen App Command Line Tools that you have at your disposal. Up until now, we've been using a lot of GUI interfaces. A lot of we've been, you know, taking a look at what you can do from a GUI perspective on how you can manage the farm. Now in this lesson, I want to walk you through some of the ZenApp command line tools that you can use either in scripts or if you're trying to do some stuff manually, maybe because it's just easier with some of these tools. We're going to specifically take a second to focus on the query command after we go through the list. So this is going to be a relatively short lesson. You guys deserve a break, but it's going to introduce you to a lot of command line tools. This is going to be important for the CCA exam, so make sure that you understand these tools and you know exactly what they do. So there's not a lot of ZenApp command line tools. As you can see, the list is shrinking. Uh, Citrix is starting to focus more on PowerShell commands. So they're trying to get away from these individualized applications, per se. However, ZenApp 6 still have these command line tools that you should be aware of. So if we start with Alt-ADDR, we, when we were talking about security and the secure gateway and etc., I told you that one of the options that you have at your disposal is to expose the ZenApp servers directly to the internet using some kind of an alternate IP address. So it would have its own internal IP address, but you're also giving it an alternate external IP address, so the server would have two, and users would be able to access that server directly from the outside, pending firewall rules and all that good stuff. But this is the command that you would give, or that you would initiate on the server itself, in order to give it an alternate IP address that then maps to that internal one. App is an interesting um, tool. App you'll probably never use, and Alt ADDR for that matter too. I, the last time I used this was literally maybe in 2000, 2001, somewhere in that area. We don't expose servers to the internet directly anymore. Uh, not that that was a good idea back then, but I have used Alt ADDR. But app is one of those commands that you only use if you are a borderline developer, not me, and you're trying to pipe certain applications or an application behavior. Think of app as an application execution shell. You can um, use app before the application starts to put the INI files for a particular application in the right locations in order for this application to function properly. I've literally never used this command in my life, <laughs> in my career, uh, but you know, just in case you come across it or you have a need for it, app is there for your use. Audit log is interesting. Audit logs allows you to pretty much audit the log on and log offs who logged into the ZenApp server, who logged off. It's just a very, it's like, you know, it's the same information that you would get out of the event viewer, the security log out of the event viewer, but it would also allow you to pipe it into a file and then, you know, look at it at a later time. Change client allows you to change um, certain things within the client session. So it'll allow you to change like the LPT port or the COM port or some of the disk drive mappings, etc. You can use the change client command to do some of this stuff. The CTX key tool is typically used if you're going to run IMA in encryption mode. So if you're going to encrypt the traffic for IMA, and to be honest with you, again, I've never encrypted the IMA traffic, but if you are to encrypt that IMA traffic, then you could use the CTX key tool to not only encrypt the traffic, but also generate the key that's required to encrypt that traffic between the different servers. CTX XML SS tool, I've used this tool many times, you might use this. Now technically, once you've installed the server and you've determined which XML port you're going to use and eh, you're not going to change that however in the event that you come across um, a scenario where you have to change the XML port after the fact then you can most certainly use the CTX XML SS two S's at the end command to change that XML port so I've used the CTX XML SS not a lot but I have used it DS check on the other hand, DS check is definitely a command that I use on a frequent basis. What DS check allows you to do is to verify or validate the integrity of the information in the data store. So uh, at some instance, because you're using the farm a lot and because there are servers going in and out and applications and, you know, published, deleted, etc., etc., or you're removing servers from the farm and you're not removing it the proper way, there might be inconsistencies in the data store SQL database server. 
Now, while you can check those manually, and that's not a very recommended method, Citrix provides a command line tool in the form of DS Check that you can run against the SQL database from a Zen app server to validate the consistency of the data in it. And if need be, if it finds any garbage in there or any inconsistent data, you have the ability to clean that database out using DS Check space for slash clean. I'll show you how to use that. It will clean any inconsistencies out of the database. I like to run this every couple of months. It just gives me a good you know, feeling inside that hey, the database is okay. DS Main. DS Main is a tool that you, you'll use on a frequent basis, especially if you come across mergers and acquisitions and if you're moving farms and if you're changing SQL servers anything to do with the maintenance of the data store you can use the DS main command to initiate those commands against the data store whether you're compacting the data store recreating the local host cache you're moving the data store etc I'll show you all those commands in a second now remember in the earlier lesson when we were talking about the HMR the health monitoring and recovery service and we told you that if Certain services that come out of the box fail X amount of times. By default, if they fail five times, then they are removed out of load balancing. Well, once they are removed out of load balancing and you fix the problem, now you got to add them back into load balancing. The way to add them back into load balancing is to initiate or use the command enable LB. Now, in all honesty, this is a command that, again, I've never used ever. But it's there for your use just in case you use HMR and you come across a server that gets removed from load balancing, you know how to add it back. Now the ICA port and the IMA port, again, those are two commands that are available. I've never used those commands ever. But if you wanted to change the default port on which ICA runs, 1494, you can use the ICA port command to change that from 1494 to whatever you want it to be. Conversely, if you want to do the same thing with the IMA port, you want to change the IMA port number for, for whatever reason it is, you can use the IMA port command to do so. Now, the command that you'll probably use most frequently is the query command. The query command allows you to query certain information from the farm, whether it's farm information, session information, user information, term server information, processes that are running, etc. The query command is probably the first thing you'll do when you're trying to troubleshoot anything is you're going to open a command prompt and start running these query commands. And that's why I dedicated an entire slide to that, which we're going to take a look at next. However, before we do that, what I wanted to, to provide you with is a link to the Citrix website where these commands are listed especially for app and change client and some of these commands that I'm not going to show you because they're very script focused very um, sort of development focused in case you wanted more information on how to set up the parameters for app for example and and where it would be relevant and with which applications and and how you know these are the ins and outs of the applications at this point if you wanted more information about that in particular this would be the link uh, that you would need to visit now the query command, the query command is very interesting. There are two iterations, so to speak, of the, of the query command that do the same thing and that's why I have them both listed here. So you can do query farm and that's going to give you some information about the farm. Query process is going to give you information about all the processes that are running on that server. Query session is going to give you information about all the sessions that are on that server and you can also query sessions on different servers if you use the right syntax. Query terminal server or term server is going to tell you which server is, you know, hosting the RDS remote host, whatever. And then you're going to get the query user, which queries all the users that are on that particular ZenApp server and gives you a list of them. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, you can also have a uh, short version of the query command by using QFarm. QFarm and Query Farm will do the exact same thing. Just want you to be aware that you know they're both there. It makes you look like a professional when you know both of them and you have the shortcuts to them. Uh, Q process will also do the same thing as Q process, and Q user will also do the same thing as query user. Now, as you've noticed, not all the commands have a shortcut. Therefore, I've only listed the ones that you'll be able to get the same kind of results if you're using them. All right, let's jump in and start initiating some of these commands. All right, back on our infamous XA01 server here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open a uh, command prompt. And you should have access to these commands you know, right here, but just to keep it clean, what I'm going to do is just clear the screen a little bit. And let's start with alt, addr, and if I do a forward slash question mark, you'll see the syntax that you can use in order for you to give this particular server an alternate address that 
you know, after configuring through the firewall, doing whatever you need to do, this would get an external facing IP address so you can hit it via 208 dot something from the internet directly, even, you know, you open up an RDP from your home computer, type in 208 XXXX, and you should be able to hit the, the Zenapp server directly. Not recommended. However, this is one other way of connecting to your Zenapp servers. The downside, of course, if you have 100 Zenapp servers, you're going to need 100 public-facing IP addresses if you're going to use uh, this particular command. Now, the other command that I wanted to show you is the uh, CTX XML SS command, so if I do a forward slash question mark, this again allows you to change the port that you configured during the installation for the XML service. You can very easily do that using this particular command. Now, those commands are all, you know, great and dandy, but the ones that I want to really focus on, the ones that you're going to use on a constant basis are going to come in handy, such as DS check. So if I run a DS check right now against the SQL data store that I'm running, what it's going to do is it's going to go out and see, well, hey, you know, I didn't find any inconsistencies here. Everything in the data store is validated. However, if I did find some inconsistencies in this store, I can easily uh, do a forward slash clean here, and it would go in and clean any inconsistencies that were available or that it found within the SQL data store. So just keep that in mind as you're using this command that you can do a forward slash clean on it. However, the command that I want to spend some time on is dsmaint. dsmaint is interesting because it allows you to control everything that is database related from this particular command. So as you can see, you can configure the database, you can back up the database, you can compact the database, you can compare two databases, you can migrate from one database to another, you can publish the SQL data store, you can uh, recover the SQL data store. If you're having issues with the database, you could try to, you know, get as much information as you can or as much data as you can out of that particular data store that's, you know, having some issues. But the two that I want to talk about here that I use on a constant basis every couple of months, every month, and maybe even, is the recreate local host cache and the verify local host cache. So what are those two? So here's how it works with Zenapp 6 or Zenapp in general. So you have your SQL data store that is the most up to date, the most recent copy of the information for the entire farm. And then you have your data collector, which holds another set set of information about user users logging in, the amount of users logging in, applications, statistics, all sorts of stuff. However, every Zenapp server in the farm also has a subset, a copy, a, a small version of the SQL data store, so to speak, in access format, in Microsoft access format that it stores locally and it does that in the event that the you know SQL server goes down the data store goes down it has enough information uh, in the local host cache for the server to continue to function now keep in mind the local host cache is just a subset of the information that is in the data store sometimes that information that is in the local host cache can get corrupted or is not up to date or for whatever reason is causing the Zenapp server to not function properly. So I've done this and I do this on a regular basis to run the command dsmaint uh, verify LHC which is verify uh, local host cache. You can run this particular command if I could type it would be nice. And there you go. I just verified uh, the, the integrity or the data that's in my local host cache to make sure that it's up to date. Now, conversely, you can also do recreate LHC, and that might need the IMA service to be restarted. Uh, but you can initiate this particular command in order to recreate the local host cache. Now, obviously, as you can see here, I'd have to stop and re uh, the, the IMA service and then run the command and then restart the IMA service. So we're not going to do that, but I wanted to show you what the recreate local host cache does. And I su suggest that you use this in the event that the Zenapp server is experiencing some issues. And, you know, you've looked at everything and you can't tell what's wrong with this Zenapp, with this particular Zenapp server. Recreating the local host cache is definitely one of the first steps, one of the first things that you that you want to do. Now, I also talked to you about the enable lb command and told you how if you wanted to, you know, if the server has been taken out of the load balancer and you wanted to add it back into the load balancer, you can very easily initiate the command enable lb. And as you can see here, that I already my my server is already enabled, so I don't have to do anything. 
Now, the command that we told you that you're going to be using most of the time is going to be the query command. So, with the query command, if we start off with uh, query farm or Q farm, again, so I can show you that you know, both of them work, it gives you a lot of information in, in this very small window, so to speak. So, it's basically telling you which ZenApp servers you have in the farm and you'll notice here that the ZenApp server that's been assigned or that's been elected the data collector has a star next to it and it's also you know it has the designation of D for data collector um, here as well it's showing you basically where the transport is for this particular server and the network address so some good information just by you doing the the Q, the Q farm command now you can also do query process this will list all of the processes that are currently running on the ZenApp server. Now you can also obviously do a pipe find and you know, you know if you're just trying to find the, the processes for a particular user because you have a hundred users logged in to this server and you just want to find one particular user you can do query pipe find and that particular user's name and it will sort them out based on the particular user that you are looking for. This is helpful just in case you want to take a look at the processes that are running just in case something is out of the ordinary. Now conversely you can also do queue process and you will get the same uh, result. Now, if you wanted to do uh, find out which sessions, or how many sessions are running on this particular server, you can do a query session here, and it's going to list the number of sessions uh, that are running. This is helpful because it tells you um, that I'm, I'm connected via the console. You have the ICA and RDP. These are the, the session IDs that you have here, whether the session is active, is it a listening session, is it a disconnected session that you can then um, kill if you need it to kill, is it been idle, etc., etc. So a lot of information when you do the query session uh, command. Query term server will tell you which server in your domain is a um, remote desktop session host server. Now, in my case, I don't have anything configured for that, but if you wanted to find that out, you have the option of doing that as well. And then you have the Q user command, which will give you, you know, basically the, the, all the users that are connected to the ZenApp server, how they're connecting to the ZenApp server. I happen to be connecting via console. It could be ICA or RDP or whatever it is, the session ID, whether it's active or not, is it has it been idle for how long the log on time etc so all of the information that I showed you earlier in the delivery services console you, you notice how we are able to take a look at it very easily and very quickly from the command line here and finally the last command that I want to talk about is the audit log so if you do an audit log here this will be able to give you all the logons and logoffs that happen on the server by querying basically the security log in, in the event viewer in, on, on Windows and you can pipe this out to a file and then go through it and just make sure you know nothing's out of the ordinary and you no know, users that are logging in or off or maybe at the wrong times or whatever it is for compliance reasons you can pipe this into a file and just use it for whatever you need to justify so the audit log can come in handy from time to time and that's all there is to it from a command line perspective I'm gonna switch back now to our presentation so we can recap what we've learned here I told you this was going to be a short lesson All right, so what did we cover in this um, relatively short lesson? We started off by talking about the different ZenApp command line tools that are available. We looked at the alt ADDR command, which allows you to add another IP address, which could be external facing so that users can connect directly into ZenApp server from the outside. We took a look at the app command. We took a look at the enable LB command, the DS main, the DS check. We took at the query commands. We took a IMA port and IM, uh, ICA port. We took a look at CTX XML SS. We took a look at the entire command line tool suite that is available at your disposal with ZenApp 6 and also made mention that Citrix is moving away from these command line tools and more into PowerShell. Now I'm sort of following Microsoft's footsteps and, and trying to move everything towards PowerShell. However, there are certain command line tools that are still available, very useful, very handy, and on top of all that, you still need to know them for the CCA exam. Now with regards to the query command, I mentioned to you that the query command is probably the command that you're going to be using the most. It allows you to query information about the farm, the session, the processes, the users, term server. So it gives you a lot of you know very quick information at your fingertips that you can use to qualify a certain problem, maybe even find a particular problem that's going on within the environment and address it very, very quickly. Finally, I hope this lesson was very informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.